and Luffy Joy and welcome to another planty video. Um, I'm hoping this one's going to turn out okay today. I'm trying a new setup. My camera decided that it no longer wants to focus. I think that's been evident from the last few videos. <laughs> it's done completely now. So uh, I'm trying on my phone and I'm recording the audio into my old phone. So hopefully, hopefully this works. Um, fingers crossed. I've already filmed this video once and I uh, didn't realize that it didn't work. So I have full audio, but no video for another video. <laughs> Let's see. Today's video is more of a science botany kind of more informational. It's more informational video um, because I wanted to discuss Latin names with you or plant taxonomy. Look at Misty's toy. Look how she's ruined him. Anyway, plant taxonomy. Um, when it comes down to brass tax, is that the same? It's important to know what your plant is actually called. So common names are all good and well when you're just chatting to people, but knowing the full Latin botanical name of a plant is important. You need to know that name to be able to properly look up the care needs, the pests that it's prone to or resistant against, where it'll do well in your house, etc., etc. So this is why Latin names are important. I thought let's do a video on it because also it's just interesting to look up if I'm honest and I thought I would share it with you. Also it was inspired because um, I float around on a lot of Facebook groups as you do. Um, and noticed a lot of people asking for plants by their colloquial names and then people posting about 400 different plants with that same name. So I'll show a search that I did. I can't obviously do it on my phone because I'm filming on my phone um, over here where I looked up money plants and about four different plants came up. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was now, like a jade. Uh, I think it was a heart leaf philodendron. I can't remember. A whole bunch of plants, a whole bunch of plants came up under money plant, a, a Pilea peperomioides, and um, they're completely different plants. So if you just say to someone, oh yeah, I have a money plant, how do I look after a money plant? They could be telling you the care for a completely different plant, and that is a problem, hence why Latin names are important. And let's be honest, using a Latin name makes you feel very fancy. So nothing like throwing out a dead language to make you sound cool. Not that that's why you should learn it, but I don't know, kind of makes me feel like a bit of a boss. So this strict naming of plants came into place in about 1905. I think the phrase is like non-clemature. That's probably not how you say it. I'll put it up here. Um, but that's basically the binomial naming system that we use nowadays. That was started in 1905 and it's revised every eight years. So we get revisions sort of sooner than that nowadays, but you'll see a lot of things are getting reclassified. So for example, the philodendron goldii, which is over here. I'll twizzle you, why not? Oh, hey. You get to see a sneak peek at plants that I'm going to show you. We good? We good. Um, has now been reclassified as Thematophyllum sprucianum, and that's because reclassifications need to happen as we learn more about plants. So this binomial or two naming system was started by a Swedish botanist called Carl Linnaeus. So we can thank him for this system, this universal system of names, because all over the world, no matter where you go, these official binomial Latin names, botanical names, are the names that those plants are known by. So whether you are in India or South Africa or the US or the UK or wherever, these plants will be called the same thing and that kind of stops any kind of confusion. So thank you, Carl. So the official taxonomy of plants, I'm never gonna be able to remember. I did write it down because I don't wanna tell you lies. But you have seven breakdowns in the family tree, as it were, the taxonomic, taxonomic? Taxonomic family tree of plants. So I'm gonna look it up. I know it starts with kingdom and then skips a few and then goes down to ones that I can remember. But I'm sorry, Miss Goya, you did teach us this in biology. I'm sorry, you were an amazing teacher, but I just can't, I can't remember. It was quite a while ago. So it's firstly, kingdom. Secondly, phylum or division. I think that depends where you are in the world. Thirdly, class. Fourth, order. Fifth, family. Sixth, genus and seventh species. And when we look at these binomial names, we are just looking at genus and species. None of the other things are included in the names that we know for plants. It's just genus and species. A genus is a group of plants with similar characteristics. They have a common ancestor. They have similar growing habitats, pest resistances, etc., etc. So a species, like the next one down, these can all reproduce with one another. Now, when we're writing the name of a plant, we write it in italics. So the genus and species always in italics. The genus is always capitalized. So when you look at a name and you see I don't know, let's look at this guy. Pilea peperomioides. Pilea is capitalized, so you know that's the genus, and peperomioides is the species because it is not capitalized, it's in lowercase. 
Uh, I'm just trying to think of other examples. So like Ficus elastica and Ficus lyrata. So they're both Ficus, so they both fall under the same genus, but they're different species of Ficus. So species lyrata and species... That's a very loud plane. Uh, I've already forgotten what I said. Lyrata and elastica? I don't know. What did I say? Yes. <laughs> I've got little notes down here to help me because my brain is like a sieve. Anyway, so now I have this guy here. Um, you also kind of need to know the Latin names because the names will tell you a little bit about the characteristics of the plant. So for example, Pilea peperomioides, oides or oioides, I can't remember what the actual ending is, in Latin it means looks like or like. So this looks like a peperomia, Pilea peperomioides. It is not a peperomia, hence ioides. Names, important. Um, I think Pilea comes from Pileus or Pileus in Latin, which means cap, because these do kind of look like little caps. So Pilea peperomioides, a cap, cap looking peperomia type plant, kind of. Tells you what it is. <laughs> he looks really good on camera, actually. I'm quite impressed with him. This guy was a gift. Thank you. Thank you, Roche. He's doing very nicely. I feel like gift plants are more special than plants that you buy. I don't know if that's just me, but I kind of feel like I treasure the ones that were given to me might buy people more than the ones that I bought for myself, which is a bit silly, but yeah, I think that's true. So then we move into subspecies. These will have a sp somewhere in the name. So for example, I'm going to put this guy down and pick this guy up. So this is a Monstera sp Peru. And that means that it is a subspecies. <laughs> Should I look through this a lot? A subspecies is slightly different from the normal species, meaning that it's evolved slightly differently in a specific geographical area. So for example, this guy has specifically evolved. Are you gonna focus? Yes, you are. <laughs> so nice being able to see if it focuses. Um, in Peru, hence the name, so it's Peru. Also, if we don't know the name of the parents, then we only use the genus and cultivar name. So this is Monstera sp Peru, genus Monstera sp and then cultivar name is Peru, but I'll get to the cultivar in a second. But you'll notice that I'm missing the species out, so it doesn't say what species it is, if that makes sense. So it's missing, it's missing the species. Next is variety, and this will have V-A-R, var, in the name. I don't have an example to show you of any um, varieties of plants, sorry about that. But when you see the name, it'll say something like, and I wrote an example down for you, because again, safe memory, Astrophytum myristigma var, Trichostatum, picture for reference, but I mean, um, that is a mouthful of a name. So this is basically where two plants have naturally crossed with each other in the wild, so it occurs naturally, as opposed to a cultivar, which is where two plants are made to cross by man. This can be accidental or on purpose. So you'll see that people try and make their own cultivars of plants, and then they give them a name, like once all the tests have been done to prove that it is a new cultivar. So cultivar is man-made, variety is something that happens in nature. Um, you'll know if your plant is a cultivar because it'll have its normal name, so genus and species, and then it'll have two little doohickeys, the word I can't remember either, my brain is on fire today, um, with a normal, like modern language name at the end, it's normally in English. So for example, Philodendron hereticum Brazil, you know that the Brazil is in the end because that is a man-made cultivar, so someone has possibly, probably, I don't know the in-depth history of the Brazil, uh, spent ages crossing plants to get this cultivar. Now I have an example to show you and I put this on my Instagram so if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen this before but I think it's a nice example of why it's important to know the Latin names of your plants and particularly what cultivar they are. Here we are, I'm back with my examples. So let's see if I can get these in shot for you and not drop them. Okay here we go. These were both sold to me as silver satin pothos from two different places to be fair it wasn't from the same place but they were both sold as silver satin pothos. Um, these are obviously two completely different plants. So if you compare the size of the leaves, I hope that's evident. These are obviously two completely different cultivars of the same genus and species. So they are Syndapsis pictus, both of them. So the same plant, but they are different cultivars of the same plant. So this is an Exotica, so the guy with the giant leaves. And this is an Aragurius, which um, is silver in Latin actually, I think. Um, Two different cultivars, but same genus and species. So these are both man-made cultivars. But this is why it is important. Oh, that is a very loud plane. We'll just wait for that to go over. Okay, we're pretty much plane free. Um, 
So yes, Syndaptis pictus, Exotica Syndaptis pictus, Synda Whoa. Synapsis pictus aragrius, I think. I've had a bit of trouble identifying this one, but I think that's what he is. Um, if I'm wrong, please, can you correct me? Because I'd like to know what my plants actually are, if I can. Um, but yeah, two completely different cultivars, but still Syndaptis pictus. Syndaptis pictus. So then sometimes you'll see something with an F in the name, and that's where there's a minor difference to the rest of the species. Um, It'll look a little bit different. So again, I've written down an example for you. Echeveria agavoides, F, so F meaning form, and Cristata. And Cristata is Latin, or Crista, Christ, I think that's the root Latin word, the etymology of it. It means tuft or crest, helmet. So you know that instead of a sort of normal rosette forming uh, Echeveria, it's going to be a tuft forming one. They sort of like, they're like this, I'll put a picture up. So you can know if it has F Cristata that it's actually a different form of that genus and species. The last thing we get are hybrids. And again, I don't have any examples to show you, sorry guys, but this is where you see an X in between the two. So this is where two species have actually crossed with each other. So they formed hybrids. Um, and again, an example for you would be Asplenium X cross Kenzoi. This is telling us that it's a hybrid between two species, but it's not telling us exactly what species it is a hybrid between. So that's why we get the X and it's not more specific. Okay, so I'm gonna break down just two quick plants for you and then I'm gonna stop waffling because nobody likes it when people waffle. What is it? Too long to watch? That's what James keeps on saying to me. Too long to watch. <laughs> too long didn't watch, too long didn't read. I think that's what it is. So we're not gonna do that. Okay, so let's start with breaking down the full or almost full taxonomic tree of this guy. Oh, hello. The lighting didn't like him coming into frame. So this is a Syngonium podophyllum neon. I'll put the name up. So hopefully now you can see genus species cultivar by the breakdown of the name. Ooh, I keep on looking even paler than normal when the light flashes. So the family that this falls under is a Raceae. And I think you know that it's a family name of a plant if it ends in Sia. I think that's how you can tell that that's the family, but all of your arrows fall under Araceae. So this guy's family is Araceae, genus is Syngonium, species is Podophyllum, and then cultivar is Neon. So that's its full breakdown of its name. So you can see how it goes down its taxonomic tree, but, oh, it's very close to the edge of the table, but I wanna compare him to this guy. So you all know this as a Monstera adansonii. Uh, so it falls under the same kingdom, obviously, Plantae. Also falls under the same family, Araceae. So these are the same family, but then we move into different genus. So then it moves into Monstera. So these are a different genus. Genus um, Syngonium, genus Monstera, species adansonii, and no cultivar. This is just who he is. So you can see how you move down the family tree and as the branches go down, you spread out and get more specific with your information. So these guys are the same family, but then different genus and species. So that's pretty much it for the breakdown of Latin names. Um, I've just got a quick list I wanna share with you just of kind of like little words that you'll see that can help to identify characteristics of plants. So if you see them in a name that somebody's advertising, say like a Hoya for sale, and you see, uh, I don't know, Globosa or something, you know what it means because the Latin name will tell you. So I'm not gonna tell you all of them because this list is immense. But if you see something like uh, albo in the name, you know it means white uh, versus rea, yellow. Argenta, silver, so like, I don't even know where he is now. So this guy. Mm, what else have we got? Uh, oh, this is called maculata. So you all know begonia maculata. Maculata means spotted. So if you see anything with maculata in the name, you know that that's plant. That's plant, that plant will have spots. Uh, what else are we working with here? Uh, it can tell you about habitat. So sylvatica means forest, that's a cool word. Characteristics, prostrata creeping. So I think you have peperomia prostrata. So you know that that's a creeping peperomia. Globosa is rounded. Uh, angustifolia, narrow leaves, probably said that completely incorrectly. Grandiflora, large flowers. I'm seeing this a lot in Hoya names, actually. This makes you just think of lots of Hoyas. Odorata, perfumed, dentata, toothed. Um, Scadens, climbing. Uh, is that a philodendron Scadens? Hereticum Scadens? My brain. Um, origin, this is cool. So Japonica means Japan, so it's something like a Fatsia Japonica. So 
you can sort of work out from the name, from the Latin in the name, maybe a little bit about the plant as well, which will help you know about its care. But anyway, that is basically it for my uh, Latin Botany Plant Taxonomy 101. I hope that helped you learn a little bit more about how your plants are named um, and kind of inspired you to find out the actual names of your plants rather than the colloquial names, because colloquial names are cute, but Latin names are better. They wear top hats. Anyway, from me and uh, Rosie and Misty, wherever they are, I think they're both asleep. Thank you so much for tuning in. I genuinely, genuinely appreciate you watching and hope you learned a little something. Um, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, that would be amazing. Many, many thumbs up. Imagine little kitty paws doing, not thumbs up. They would take over the world if they had thumbs, but little paws up as well. Um, if you like the video, please give it a like. If you wanna have a chat in the comments, uh, more than welcome to, or talk on Instagram. I like to reply to all of your comments on Instagram. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at leafy.greenfingers. I post quite a lot on there, kind of updates of plants and things. So yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you next time for another planty video. Bye guys. See you guys next time.